what has been our industry's approach to the implementation of this technology are the following. This is based on uh, my experience. I've been dealing with oil and gas industry specifically on this topic for, for a very, very long time. Uh, so what do they do now? After identifying that it is very important to have uh, AI and machine learning and data analytics, they say, okay, let's build a data analytics group. And then what they do, they build the data analytic group and they have it to be led by a statistician or an AI expert from Silicon Valley and other parts. Then they spend literally tens of millions of dollars and many, many years in order to get results. Well, they end up with very poor or at best, very, very mediocre results. That has been done over and over and over again. Uh, of course, many times they avoid confessing the lack of success, well, simply because management never makes mistakes. Until you have a change of management, then they change everything. Uh, they're disappoint, they, they are disappointed, and then what they do when they don't get good results, they end up blaming the technology, not the way they're implementing it. They say, oh, it's machine learning and, and AI or data science is really very mediocre, it's all hype. There's a lot of truth about the fact that there is incredible amount of hype and marketing scheme associated with, with this technology right now. That, that's a fact. Uh, however, Blaming the fact that you cannot get good results in your company on the technology is not realistic because all you have to do is to look at how this technology has impacted other industries. And to, then, then if it, it is not the technology, it is how you implement it, how you do it, uh, that is very, very important. How to add to value to your bottom line. Then uh, blame, the, they, what they do, they blame the lead scientist or the people that they hire, the statistician. Many times I've seen this over and over again. Uh, and then what they do, they, they fire them and they hire another statistician and another uh, AI person to do the same thing. And this is a circle that's been going on for about uh, many years now. So fortunately, quite recently, and I mean as recently as a few months ago, uh, some companies have came to the conclusion that what they need to do is, is uh, to change that direction and go back to what is realistic. And what's realistic, folks, is not to hire AI experts and statisticians to do this for you, this is all about domain expertise. They need reservoir engineers, production engineers, drilling engineers, completion engineers to lead that process. This is what I have been <laughs> preaching for a long time. Some people have come to that conclusion and have started doing that. And I have very good examples of observing some of the great work that has been done in some of the companies and then you look into it, you see the entire data analytics group or data collection group was led by a reservoir engineer who were not necessarily an expert in AI, but was interested in AI and learned from it and uh, found out how to put together the data in order to be used most. Uh, uh. Now, this is a major step in the right direction. But unfortunately, for, at least for one of the companies that I worked with, that, that they started that. But then again, when you tell them, okay, good, now you need to do this, this, and this, it becomes very, very hard to do it. The idea has surfaced, they have come to conclusion, but implementation still uh, sees a lot of problem associated with it. And let's hope that they, they will get over that uh, sooner or later. later. And another problem that has been unfortunately 
been seen is when it comes to AI and machine learning, there has been so much marketing scheme, there has been so much hype and unrealistic expectation that people think, okay, all I need to do is I bring an AI expert in, in six months, I'm gonna change my industry to, to it's not gonna work like that. Uh, and, and this unfortunate hypes have overwhelmed our, our industry and unfortunately it happens at the highest level. The approach is a top-down approach. 90% of the approaches from AI usually goes from the CEO down. You don't see much of it that should go from the engineers and up. And whenever that approach has been taken, a lot of su uh, the success has been a lot more than, than the otherwise. A correct approach to the application is probably bringing it to the petroleum engineering uh, departments uh, and, and see how we can handle it at that level. And then now we go to the academia. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna, finish very, very quickly, and, and I know there's gonna be probably question, and, and I'm gonna leave it to that. So the question is this, are the petroleum engineering departments all around the world, whether in the US or everywhere else, are they ready to include AI and machine learning as part of their curriculum? And that's one of the questions. In my opinion, no, we're not ready. Uh, there, and, and the reason is there is incredible, incredible amount of uh, resistance you know, when I go and I talk to people in the industry about AI and machine learning, it, recently it has been much better. But I've been doing this for a, for a very, very long time. And the amount of resistance that you see, it's incredible. And that's maybe why one of the reasons that, 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 that the marketing scheme has led people to go from the CEO, not from the technical people, because they get smashed by the technical people. They get smashed in the industry, they get smashed in our academia. So if in the academia we do not agree with AI and machine learning, and we do not buy the fact that they can be uh, useful, then how could we even incorporate things? It's like uh, industry saying it's good, we, believe, we, we think it's good because industry say it and we have a lot of connection with the industry, but it's all nonsense. So how could we do that? This, solving this problem is, is really, really uh, an, an issue. And if we don't solve that, uh, we don't address that, I, I don't think we can do much about it. Uh, so what are the, if we do that, if we eventually solve that, what are the requirements uh, in terms of uh, bringing it? Uh, in my opinion, it is incredibly hard to do it at undergraduate level. Given everything that was told uh, uh, in the first session, and uh, what, what Shirish says in terms of the number of hours that is required to do, it's really, really hard to do. The best probably we can do, have one, maybe two courses at the undergraduate level, maybe elective, to have them learn, they do right now statistics, do machine learning a bit, at a very, very, just a very basic uh, idea, but then, in the graduate program, in my opinion, you have to have a complete different program called, in my opinion, petroleum data analytics, where you solve every petroleum engineering related problem from drilling, well testing, simula reservoir simulation, petrophysics, all of them have them a data analytic and AI approach to it. And then the person who graduated from there then understands how to use this uh, technology best and, and use it. And that's what I wanted to say. And one of the major issues that we have, uh, and I've been dealing with for, for the past two decades, is it's data driven. So if you don't have data, what are you gonna do? And how about the data in our industry? Is the industry willing to share data with us? Of course they don't. Now, all of you probably know, recently, Stat Oil released some data for one field. Well, that's fantastic. I'm incredibly excited about it. I'm teaching a course just on that particular data next semester. So, but that's one field, folks. And I still haven't seen the data to see how <laughs> you know, detailed it is, whether I can use it or not. So in order to do that, uh, of course, we have to come up with tools, there are ways to, to 
circumvent that and at least teach kids how to, to use it. But I'm going to stop here and maybe have more discussion. Thank you very much.